І е, зараз ми переходимо до дуже великої міжнародної команди спікерів із громадянської науки, яка представляє е, Liber Europe and SciStart. We are now proceeding to a big team of speakers about citizen science. Тайбері Сигнат, директор компанії Scientific Knowledge Services, яка спеціалізується на допомозі дослідницьким організаціям, новими технологіями і методами роботи. Далі в партнерстві з Любер проводить успішну серію семінарів, яка спеціалізована на відкриту науку. Будь ласка, включіть відео, Сибирь. Hello, everyone. Thank you for inviting me to give a presentation today. I'm really honored by this invitation and your participation. Thank you indeed. Before going any further, I'd like to express my support for the people of Ukraine that under are under unjustified invasion and forced to fight for freedom and survival. I hope you will win and reestablish the independence of your country. Thank you for supporting the democratic values in such a heroic way. Slava Ukraini. I am Tiberius Signat, Director of Scientific Knowledge Services, a small company that works with research organizations, research funders, policy makers, and publishers to change research cultures and disseminate trustful knowledge. The transition to open science is an important part of how we try to change the research cultures. We will have a talk today about trust in science in, and in society and innovation in research through citizen science. In this conversation, we will find together the role of citizen science and what role plays in the future of science. I decided not to be a solo contributor and what role plays in the future of science. I decided not to be a solo contributor. So when I received this invitation to present in your conference, I extended the invitation to my colleagues from SciStarter from USA and Library Europe. SciStarter is an international platform where you can find thousands of active citizen science projects and you can register your citizen science projects too. And Liber Europe, is the European Association of Research Libraries, a very prestigious organization that helps libraries create their own future. So I will have a small introduction now, followed by a contribution from SciStarter and research libraries that are members of um, Liber Europe. I hope you will enjoy it, and I look forward to receiving your questions. Let's start with a question before anything else. Science. Think yourself. I think all of us asked ourselves at, ourselves at least once, what is science? No need to answer to yourself, of course, with a definition. What do you mean when you think of science or research. To me, science represents the quest for the quest for understanding nature and society, the freedom to explore the bizarre, and the right to communicate the findings, including those that are sometimes inconvenient to deliver. But have we ever found the laws of nature? Do, you, do we really understand our societies? No. And after all, 
do we have any chance to find the perfect explanations for how nature and societies works? These questions remain with no answer. Yes, we found a way to describe the universe using mathematics, physics, chemistry, medicine, biology. Yes, indeed, we are now redescribing humans in a language called genomics. Indeed, we discover and learn more about our societies, but we remain perfectly unable to establish the truth about nature and society, unable. As a result, researchers developed an art of compromise, a state of tolerance for them to continue to explore the bizarreries of nature and society. And of course, to establish findings, no matter how hard it is to accept them. And that solution was to agree on what they trust. They follow specific methods and protocols. They communicate results in certain ways. They review their work and more and more, they try to reproduce their work. Ultimately, this is how they agree to trust something until new evidence unve is unveiled and new understandings are coming in their field. The new evidence will be embraced and trusted again by all. Let's be clear, researchers don't claim they find the ultimate understanding of a phenomenon. They simply agree on what they trust until new evidence comes in. In that sense, science is a humble activity. We should remain humble and learn to accept that is not the truth we will find, but the new evidence that we will trust. To summarize, science or research is the business of, of trust. We should all be busy building that trust. This is an area of intervention for open science and citizen science, to build trust and to build transparency. You need that not only when you communicate, but also when you work as a researcher. Engaging with the public in the earliest stage of research and involving the public in the research process, like data collection, is a great way to build trust between science and society. Remember, trust and curiosity, trust and curiosity are the fundamental elements of science and research. We need to continue building trust in research, as said. But what about outside of the research community? Is it clear to everyone in our societies that researchers don't find the ultimate truth to our questions? I guess your answer is no. Let's admit, our society is not designed to grant trust by default. No reasonable person expects to obtain trust just by asking for it. On the contrary, we need to work hard to acquire the evidence, the confidence of others. Here is where citizen science could help, engaging with the rest of society in the process of discovering new evidence, working closely with the public to build new evidence is what paves the path for better policy, better services, better products, better investments in research, and ultimately sustainability and better governance, and why not a stronger democracy? In a nutshell, science 
is the quest for understanding nature and society, the freedom to explore the bizarre, and the right to communicate the findings as they are. Instead of an ultimate truth, we build evidence that stays until new evidence is born. This is a system which requires trust among researchers and between researchers and the rest of society. It's a system that nurtures generations of curious minds. Citizen science and public engagement are essential constituents of this system. So the question is, have libraries developed enough services to support these constituents? Ask yourself. Let's see what is the innovation that citizen science brings to the research system. What is citizen science? It's the active participation of the public in research activities with their intellectual capacity, their time, or other kinds of research, kind of resources. There are many definitions of citizen science, but in a nutshell, all of them are referring to the collaboration between professional scientists and the rest of society. Please note, this is a two-way activity, which empowers citizens to play a role in research activity, and the result, as a result, produce improvements and make discoveries which will benefit to society as a whole. Citizen science effectively relocates scientific activities into a wider community and offer grounds for more interaction between science and society. Research libraries and public libraries are already well placed to support citizen science. My colleagues from Liber Europe and SciStarter will show you this in, a, in more details in the second part of this material. There are many research topics in which researchers alone are simply not enough to build new and strong evidence. Not because they are not good enough, but because they are not, there are not enough resources in the system available for them. So engaging with the rest of the public increases researchers' chances to access the resources they need to produce progress for our societies. The bespoke prototype is a humble contribution we've made to open science. We created this free to use prototype, we published it and we promote it so that a, what was a LERU recommendation in 2016 comes to see the light of day. The concept was first introduced in October 2016 by the League of European Research Universities, LERU. And it recommends to all universities to create a citizen, single, citizen science single point of contact. Bespoke is an acronym for Broad Engagement in Science Point of Contact. What would such bespoke look like? For an in-depth presentation of our bespoke prototype, please visit the video highlighted at the bottom right corner of this slide. Briefly, it is a set of reports, connectors, templates, dissemination plans, and one or two portals that are built and maintained across your institution. Why? One, to allow volunteers interact with you, and two, to support your researchers and funders to create an effective 
public engagement program in research. But what is ultimately the real value of this book? It drives research beyond the academic and research organizations. It creates a broad community around research practices and policies. It nurtures a community of curious minds. It educates people beyond the traditional curricula. It consolidates trust in research, this single citizen science single point of contact. People will, people will learn to distinguish between misinformation and evidence, between sustainable development and manipulation. And ultimately, researchers will learn too, to become better citizens and to contribute more to our society. Here is an example of citizen science in practice, a very dear project in which I am, re I am a researcher is PSYCOP, a project that involves lay citizens to understand how are we tracked by default when we navigate on the internet and when we are using mobile apps. It is a citizen science project because we need to investigate so many websites and apps, and we will also want to offer education to citizens. As researchers, we can't do it alone. Our group is too small. If you think you can help, please disseminate this link through your networks. Of course, you are more than welcome to participate in this project. We need as many volunteers as possible. And the MOOC, a massive open online course, is available for those, available for those interested. Conclusions. Libraries could play a great role to make citizen science a common reality. It's not going to be easy, and libraries and librarians need to learn too how to do it. In my final slide, i like to point out to an article that we wrote as a community of supporters for citizen science. It is called Merry Work, Libraries and Citizen Science. And it's a great introduction, introduction to this territory, new territory for libraries. And here are my contact details. Please feel invited to address any questions or to contact me if you feel so. I will now leave you with my colleagues, with our colleagues from SciStarter and Liber Europe for a very interesting material they produce for us. Thank you once again for inviting me. And I wish all the best for Ukraine, for you, your colleagues, for you. Slava Ukraini. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tiberius is? Yes. Thank you very much. It's a wonderful, wonderful presentation. For many of us, this is a real life opener. І якщо Міро Пушник його тема для нас трохи ближча, and while Miro's topic is uh, is a little closer to us, бо ми давно працюємо в цьому напряму і маємо вже практичні результати, because we have uh, traveled that that path and we have some practical results already. То громадянська наука для нас терінтогніта для багатьох із нас терінтогніта. Then in your case, citizen science is a terra incognita for many of us. На минулорічній конференції в мене з Анією Адамян була доповідь про один реалізований проект в нашій бібліотеці. 
last year in my report with Anya, we had uh, one uh, example of one implemented project in citizen science. Але, якщо чесно, я більше не знаю про реалізовані університетськими бібліотеками України проекти з citizen science. Honestly, I am not aware of any other implemented project regarding citizen science anywhere in librarian community. Тому виступи твій і групи, яка буде виступати вельма шановних спікерів з питання громадянської науки. Therefore, uh, your speech and uh, would be reports by your respected colleagues. Це проникнення в бездни величезного океану нових знань з громадянської науки. just one step inside a very big ocean of new knowledge. Якщо можна, я тобі задам питання по професії, професійне. One professional question, am I allowed? Yes, please. Так. Тіберіусу, ти доктор філософії з бібліотечної науки інформатики Бухарецького університету. Скажи, будь ласка, чи суто бібліотечні і інформаційні наукові знання стали причиною твого звернення до таких проєктів? As far as we know, your degree is, is the doctor of philosophy from Romania University. Uh, uh, did your library background uh, help you choose this special topic in citizen science? Well, uh, unfortunately not. I am, so I defended my PhD thesis in 2013, and I came close to this subject in 2015 when I was already living uh, in Germany. I live in Munich. And yeah. uh, so it wasn't the case in, in Ro Romania that time to be supported this approach to, I, I, I was not aware when I made my PhD about this topic. I learned right. there. Are... Sorry, sorry. Yeah, hold on for a moment, please. Da, uh, uh, когда, я узнав о, об этой концепции в 2015-м, уже когда жил в Германии, поэтому это никак не очень-то связано. Я почему об этом спрашиваю? Просто многие наши ученые не понимают, почему библиотекари университетские входят в пространство открытой науки, открытых исследований. Uh, вот как бы твое отношение к этому, нужно нам все-таки uh, смириться с таким отношением или двигаться вперед? Uh, the reason I ask is that uh, in this country uh, librarians are entering this uh, area of open science and promoting open science and citizen science, but uh, this is quite unusual. In your opinion, uh, should we keep on working uh, in this direction? I think it's absolutely necessary. This is why I, I made that uh, introduction, if you have noticed, about trust in research, about the quintessence of research, which is not about uh, establishing the truth, but an evidence. And that evidence should be communicated to the society. So as you probably notice, uh, one, maybe 10 years ago, red meat was good to eat. Now red meat is not good, white meat is good. And again, white meat is not good, red meat is good because white meat con contains too many antibiotics, for example. So you see the evidence, it, this is just a naive example. The evidence the researchers are bringing is changing over the time. And you need a population that accepts, you don't need a population that says these scientists are, are crazy. One year they say left, the other year they say right. So they need to understand the nature and the challenges of research activities. Now, you cannot convince the population at the end of research. You have to engage early. And uh, many other examples could be brought. So I think it's actually a big mistake not engaging with public in the research process. And it's a big mistake not engaging with public in an early days of research project. 
Мое отношение к, к этой деятельности такое. Нужно коммуницировать науку широкому обществу. Причем это можно сделать и на раннем этапе, и впоследствии. Например, возьмем такое отношение к, к мясу. Раньше считалось, что красное мясо хорошее, белое, плохое. Теперь наоборот. Но это все должно основываться на фактах. Много есть вопросов, о которых нужно информировать общественность. То есть библиотеки должны информировать общественность о исследовании. И поэтому вы совершенно правильно делаете, потому что у ученых не должна, у ученых не должна быть репутация, какие-то это, это чудаки сумасшедшие какие-то с непонятными исследованиями. То есть лучше рассказывать общество о том и в начале, и в начале проекта, и в конце проекта. Но нужно доносить до общества вот, значимость науки. Дякую, дякую. Thank you very much.